I just feel like now I'm at a time in my life where it's important that I share this message. It's important that I speak about what's really been going on inside me for all these years. Um, you know, for, for well over 20 years, I've struggled with substance abuse, man. I've struggled with drugs and alcohol. And it's something that I've kept private um, as much as I could. There are a lot of people that know me, um, know that side of me, and there are a lot of people that don't know that side of me. You know, I was 13 when I smoked my first joint. And it was at that point in my life when I was 13 that I realized that I could feel some way different than what I naturally feel. Like the way that I feel right now, the way that I felt then, I discovered that I could feel another way. And that other feeling that was fake, that other feeling that was created by, you know, consuming or ingesting drugs and alcohol, that became a safe place for me. I convinced myself that in that space I felt comfortable. It was in that space that my ego became inflated. It was in that space that my insecurities, I felt that they they were lessened, that they disappeared. You know, my vulnerability took a major blow there and, and I became very comfortable in that other feeling. But really all that it was doing was creating this false sense of, of self and really just pulling me away further and further from who I truly am and pulling me away from my values. I was raised in a society and I was raised in an environment to be a tough kid, you know, to not show any weakness. And I tried to hold on to that. I always tried to make it seem like I had my shit together. I always tried to make it seem like things didn't phase me because I wore a mask. I would wear these masks and these masks would pr protect me from my vulnerabilities and my insecurities. They'd protect me from my fears. And, and it, was, it, was just a, it was just a struggle. I essentially got really sick and tired of being sick and tired. And, and, and I took a step to better myself. And I just celebrated, or I just achieved a one year milestone of continuous sobriety. I've had stints of sobriety in the past, but never a year. I've done these 30 and 60 day stints in the past where I'm kind of like this, right? And once it's done, I go off the deep end again. Today, you know, my hands are still. My hands are full of color. They're no longer clenched fists, man. And when I did those challenges, I was not doing the internal work. I was not digging deep down inside and identifying trauma. I wasn't identifying events that broke my heart. And I wasn't identifying the grief and the grieving that I had never did in my life. So growing up, my brother was my role model. He was everything that I wanted to be. And my dad was very hard on us, and I resented him for that. He very much played an enforcer type figure at home, and my mother was the one with the compassion and the sensitivity. Yeah, I resented my father for many years, and, and there was a lot of yelling and screaming, and, but you know, ultimately, now when I look back and I practice empathy and compassion, and couldn't imagine the struggles that my father went through. My dad went through so much to give my brother and I a good life and he just wanted us to live on the straight and narrow and he was just doing what he thought was best for us and I didn't see it that way and I resented him for it. Another major traumatic event in my life was losing my brother. I was 21 years old and I was very much an addict by the time that happened and that just propelled me into another dimension to be honest with you. I used my brother's death to justify my use. He died when I was 21 years old, he was 26, and he was such a big role model and major inspiration for me. I mean, don't get me wrong, we butted heads too. I mean, what brothers don't? But I can't deny the impact that he had on my life, man. I can't deny that at all. Major, major influence. He was the one, Jai was the one that took me to all the restaurants, the KBBQ, the Salad King, you know? He's the one that took me for pho. He's the one that took me to the beautiful Italian restaurants. He's the one that took me all over the place because he loved food so much. He's the one that took me for the best beef patties I've ever had, you know? He's the one that, that, that did all those things with me when I was growing up and losing him was tough, but I didn't grieve. I used, I dove deeper into substance abuse, right? I smoked that much harder. I partied that much harder. I drank that much harder. So that was a very traumatic event. And uh, today I speak openly about it because by doing that, it heals my soul, man. It heals my heart. And it allows me to forgive myself. It allows me to forgive him, you know, for leaving us. It allows me to, uh, to forgive my parents, man. It's, um, 
think it's important to share this, man. I'm not the only person with hardships. I'm not the only person struggling with this. I know I'm not. I see people around me struggling with it. I can't tell them what to do, but I can demonstrate that I've tried something and it worked, you know? I tried to recover and I'm not recovered today. I'm not perfect. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know in this moment right now, and I know for the past year, I've been putting in the work to lead a better life. You know, the one year milestone, it's just another day. It's just 365 days. I don't know where I'm at now. I'm past the year now, but if I stop practicing at one year and one day, everything I've been practicing and all that hard work that I've put in for that past year, if I stop doing all those things, then guess what? I'm gonna fall back into old patterns. But at the same time, mentally in my head, hitting that one year milestone demonstrated to me that I put in a substantial amount of work that I made an effort to do something that I hadn't done before. And it gave me that little bit of credibility and validation to at least be able to openly share this story. This is not something that I would have had the headspace or experience to share at a month, two months, or three months of continuous sobriety. I needed to get to a year. And even then, I mean, like I didn't know at a year I was gonna divulge all this information and just become completely vulnerable and like share all these deep, dark, intimate secrets of my past. It just felt like the right thing to do. It just felt like I have a message to share and I wanna share it to everybody that it's okay to not feel okay all the time. At this very moment, I'm genuinely content. And for most of my life, I couldn't say that. For most of my life, I looked outside to make myself feel happy on the inside. And today on the inside, I feel, I feel better. I feel, I feel like I'm, I'm going to make it. And I feel like, I feel like the way that I'm supposed to feel. Mm. That's really what it is. So yeah. This last round of mine that I was in treatment, I had made a commitment to myself that I would really go places I've never been before. I didn't want to keep repeating the same cycle and abuse going forward. I felt like I had reached a bottom that I just couldn't repeat it again. I couldn't go any lower. So in treatment, it was suggested to me that I write letters, pen to paper, write letters to my father, to write letters to my brother, to write letters from my brother to my father. And I found that as odd at the time, but it ended up being a very rewarding exercise for me. These are letters that I can't give to my brother. These are letters that were not given to my father, but in them, I had a period of growth. The letters to my dad started out very resentful of him and ultimately very selfish of me. Dad, why did you yell at me here? Dad, you weren't there for me when I was a kid. Dad, you never asked me how I was feeling etc etc but over time with guidance these letters went from a place of selfishness and went from a place of pointing fingers and blaming to a place of empathy and to a place of compassion when i put myself in my dad's shoes i then realized what he may have or what he was going through at that time that he moved to canada that he started a family, all the sacrifices that he had to make, you know, working in the job that he was, you know, as an executive, all the stresses that he had to go through, potentially even the racism that he had, he had to endure as, you know, a person of color in the big banks in a senior role. Writing letters to my brother was similar in the beginning too. I was resentful that he left. I was resentful that he took his own life and left me behind and left all of us behind to pick up the pieces. And then I, again, started to practice that empathy, what he must have been going through, how he had no one to turn to, no one there to help him. And no matter what happens today, now, or going forward, he's not coming back. So I can choose to hold resentment for him I can choose to ask all these questions, why this, why that? But today, now I choose to celebrate his life. That's the best thing that I can do. No one can take away the impact that Jai had on me and no one knows the impact that Jai had on me but me. So what am I gonna do with it from now? I am going to cherish and celebrate the memories that I have. And really, with all the work that I do, all the exciting stuff, all the traveling and cooking here and, and everything that goes on, I'm always celebrating my brother's legacy and carrying that with me. 
I still put pen to paper. Journaling has been very effective for me. I think it's important because the way that I feel right now is not necessarily the way that I'll feel tomorrow or in six weeks from now. I'm in different head spaces and uh, I have different perspectives as I learn more and as time goes on. If I were to journal today, what would I write down? I'd write down where I'm at currently at this very moment. And I feel a certain stillness in me. I feel a peace of mind and a serenity that I've never felt before. But there was a time where the birds chirping used to be a sound that I absolutely hated as I was either trying to go to sleep or my mind was racing too much. And that's completely changed today. I've developed a morning routine now and the mornings have become very sacred for me. I look forward to hearing the birds chirping and I look forward to waking up and resetting in a way and recalibrating and remembering and tapping in to the spiritual fitness that has not led me astray since I started investing into it through prayer, meditation, and through very thoughtful, mindful practices. It's only been a year. I have the rest of my life to go, but I take this thing one day at a time. It's really daunting for me to think about where I'm gonna be at in six months. I don't know what type of adversity life's gonna throw at me. But today, in this very moment, I'm tapped in. I feel like I'm free. I feel like I've been reborn. I feel like I've been released from jail and a prison in my mind. That's what, that's what I feel like today. So I'm just super grateful. Grateful to the people that have stuck around me. Grateful to my parents. Grateful to the program. You know, grateful to those people that held my hand and loved me and told me that it would be okay if I took action and did the work. If I built up my spirituality if I maintained that spiritual fitness. So yeah, very emotional right now is how I feel. Um, and I feel like a big weight has been lifted off me. And yeah, just overwhelmed with gratitude.